Hey guys, welcome back to WP Event Manager. And in this video, we're gonna talk about our WP Event Manager listing page settings. For past few videos, I explained you some settings for WP Event Manager. And today we're gonna do the same for the listing page. Okay, so let's head over to our settings section. So let's switch to the event listing tab and we will take a look what settings we have and what value we input onto them and what they will change into the website. Okay. So starting from the top, we have listing per page. So this is how many listings uh, should be shown per page by default. By default, it's 10. So let's do one thing. Let's open the front end side. And for us, it will be better to demonstrate these settings or like explain it in the real, real page over here. Okay. So listing per page is 10. That means how many events will be listing uh, in this page over here by default. You can modify them, but make sure you don't go too high number otherwise it can be a little bit slow on the front end side as it has to load all those data right so after that you will have a load more button over here to like go through all the events or like more events uh on like bottom over here and those are async queries so uh don't worry about the loading time because the initial load will be about the listing per page uh, settings over here if we have 10 uh, listing over here or 10 events, we will see a load more button over here after 10 events. But let's say we change it to two, yeah? Then we will have a better example since we do not have a lot of events over here. So let's load. So you see, we have now two uh, events and we can click load more events to load two more events. This is the principle how it's gonna work, okay? And then we have cancelled events so and we have hide cancelled event by default the cancelled event will get uh, shown up over here and let's change this back to 10 and so by default cancelled events aren't hidden in the listing page over here they will still get shown in case like a user wants to know if the events is active or not or it get cancelled so they will be still visible over here but you can choose not to show them on the listing page okay so if you check this on save settings and you will be not showing cancelled event on the listing page okay fine then we have hide expired listing of course by default it's on this will hide the expired listing in event uh, archive or search so if we check this on the expired event won't be searchable using uh, these filters over here as well so it will completely hide the expired events from the uh, event listing page okay then we have hired expired listing content. So you can choose to hide the expired events from this listing page and not choose to hide its single event details page from the website. So, I mean, I know it doesn't make uh, like more sense in like common eye, but some people will have the requirement to hide like one of those, but not the both of those. Okay, what I mean by that, so you might want to hide the listing from uh, the event listing page, but not want to hide the event content or even single details page. What that makes uh, possible, you can check this on, check this off, check this on and you are good to go. Or maybe you want to um, like not hide the expired events from the listing page, but you want to hide the content. You can check this off and take this, uh, keep this on to make that happen. So. You can like uh, try combinations with those. Then we have multi select categories, it's disabled by default. So, multi select categories and multi select event types are pretty much similar, but for categories and event types, so I'm gonna go ahead and explain those uh, in one go. Okay, so by default, we are able to select one category and one type per event. Okay, so if we check this on over here, this settings, these two settings, that will let us select multiple event categories or multiple event types for the event. So a feature, a small feature, but configurable. Okay. So we are keeping this off by default. So category filter does uh, like allow you to filter events with category. So here we have two options. The first option will uh, like show one category option over here that you can choose from like over here. So if we select these changes over here, will uh, allow you to choose multiple category from here when you are filtering events on the event listing page. Okay, makes sense. Pretty much a handy feature. So by default, let's keep it that way. And event type filter, 
so the same principle as category filter as well you will see uh, like a multi select over here if we select the second option over here or if we choose the default function it will allow us to select one event type and filter among uh, those uh, filter regarding those event type among all the events so either it's one filter or even category to use for event filtering or you can choose multiple if you select the second option for both okay so that's the pretty much all the settings we have for the event listing page as of now let us know in the comment if you want to see like uh, some specific settings or configurability in the uh, event listing page we will try our best to bring that to you and bring that to the community and we will explain that as well when we release in a changelog video so we are open for suggestion drop some suggestions in the comment like this video subscribe to the channel until next time i'm shara saying goodbye thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next